you know, many people ask, you know, when they look at the evidence and they look at maybe um, the new findings in archaeology, and people ask, were there any gods before the Christian God? And the short answer is no. There weren't any other gods. As a matter of fact, right in the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So if God created everything, of course, there were no gods before the one true and only God. You know, where a lot of the confusion comes from is that when you look in archaeology and you look at what people are finding, maybe in Egypt or in the Middle East, when you find these things, these are idols. They're finding man-made idols that people have made. And this is something that is distinctly prohibited when it comes to the one and true only God, Yahweh, the God of the Bible, who is the Christian's God. In the beginning, when God created the earth, he says, let us make man in our image. And this was the combination that made up God. And it is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the Christian's God. Jesus has always been there. Although he, he had not manifested himself in the flesh as Jesus Christ, he still made appearances even in the Old Testament as we see many times in the Bible where it says the word of the Lord appeared to people and talked to people. This happened to the prophets in the Old Testament as well as when Jesus came manifested in the flesh. So understanding that God is not to be worshipped through idols, and this is something that is actually prohibited. God has always been praised from the beginning. In John 4.24, we are told that God is spirit, and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Also, understanding that the word of God, all the way from Adam, has been passed on by oral tradition, and this is the way the Jews have kept the word for so long. You know, it's funny how some people believe that, you know, the people in ancient days were some kind of brutes and didn't have any kind of understanding. But, you know, even children memorized the whole Torah. You know, whole parts of the Bible were memorized by people and passed on by oral tradition for the longest before they even started to be written down. You have to remember that in ancient times, it was very expensive in a very tedious process to write down anything. It wasn't like it is today. You know, going going deeper and showing you in scripture that these um, so-called gods that people were worshiping, that people believe were actually older than the one and only true God, we can see in scripture that they have been brought up over and over all throughout scriptures. Right here in 2 Kings 17 and 7. All this happened because the people of Israel had sinned against the Lord, their God, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. Under the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, they had worshiped other gods. You see that all through scriptures in the Old Testament, um, the people of Israel were punished for falling into the worship of other gods, idolatry. Even when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments, you know, the people of Israel had made idols. You know, even they did it on their own. And whenever a certain amount of time would pass by, the people of Israel would fall into idol worship and they would start worshiping other gods. They would start making idols. And, and this is what we see. We see when we look into archaeology, we see all these different gods that were worshipped. And this is recorded in scripture. And this has never been a good thing. And, in, and this, this will give you no evidence of the true spiritual God that we all worship, who is the creator of all things. You know, when Jonah was running from God and he was on a boat, the people on this boat were worshiping other gods. And when they saw that this this um, boat was being um, overtaken by the weather, they knew that there was something wrong. And, you know, um, Jonah ended up telling them, you know what, you know, God is mad at me. And then after a while, they um, heeded to his word and um, they threw him overboard because this is what he told him. He said, if you want this, if you want God to stop, you know, come after this boat, you got to throw me overboard. So they throw him overboard and all of a sudden everything died down. And this is when they knew, you know what, this is no idol. This is the one and true only God who controls the weather and is the creator of all things. This has been told over and over in the Bible. And it's even recorded more in archaeology as well as in the Bible. You know, Joseph, when he was sold into slavery by his brothers, he ended up in Egypt. And when he interpreted some dreams 
for, for the Pharaoh at that time, you know, this Pharaoh understood that, wow, you know, this isn't, this isn't like these little superstitious little idols and gods that were worshiped. This is something real. And this is why he was given a position to where he had actual control over everything. He was just second place under the Pharaoh himself. He was given his own pyramid. It's actually proof in archeology span for this also. You know, the Pharaoh at that time, his name was Sesostris. And, um, and uh, Joseph was around for Sesostris the second and the third. Sesostris the second was was um, the Pharaoh that had a, a very abundant reign as Pharaoh. And then Sesostris the third had a famine come. This is actually recorded in hieroglyphs and it's been found. And at this time, Horus, the god Horus, was being worshipped by the Egyptians. So once again, when we look into um, archaeology, we see that, um, you know, Horus was being worshipped and people are like, oh, well, this was before the Christian God. And it's just not true. At this time, this is the time where Joseph was actually um, reigning right under the Pharaoh. Looking to the hieroglyphs, we see that um, Joseph was actually called by the Egyptians, Sasobic. And this was the name of Joseph up at that time. Uh, Joseph actually used to build dikes. That was one of his gifts. He would construct dikes. And, and he had a big part in all the abundance that Sesostris II had with all of his different crops. And remember, this is all parts of his dreams. He had these dreams and they started to come to pass. And this is why um, Pharaoh knew that his God was the true God. And even in the hieroglyphs, um, they pretty much called him the um the worshiper of the God of all gods. And you see hieroglyphs of, of um, a man with his hands up. And this is just how they would explain Joseph because he was always praying to the real true God. And uh, so so um, if you wanna um, see more about this, you can check out, um, is Genesis history. It's someone named um, Dr. Doug Petrovich. And he goes into a deeper explanation of this and shows you the evidence if you'd like to see it. I'll put the link in the description. Also, um, Gilgamesh, this is one of the oldest tales that we see when it comes to archaeology. The tale of Gilgamesh is the story of a great flood, and it actually turns out that this was plagiarized from the Torah. This is also just further evidence pointing towards the true one and only God. And you know, the, the uh, story of Gilgamesh, they, they it's pretty much just like the story of Noah and the flood. but the dimensions given for the um, boat that Gilgamesh gives would never it would never hold up in, in a real flood. It was actually a cube, and if this flood happened, you know everything would flip upside down, and you know everything would have died inside of it. But the true um, ark and, and the true dimensions that are given in the Bible for the ark has actually been built. It's been built by the Chinese, and they built a model and they actually tested it out. The model and it, it actually worked. And also, if you'd like to check out the Ark Encounter by Ken Ham, is also a, a real life-size replica of the Ark. And this is something that was actually very viable and is a, um, a real true dimensions given in the Bible of the Ark. This is why you still have scientists today that believe that the flood really did happen and that the um, Genesis account is the true account of the flood. You know, just like um, seculars have so many different models of how the, the how the world came about, they have you know the Big Bang model. That there's um, people believe in uh, multiple universes and string theory. There's different theories that they but that they believe in. But there's also different um, flood models that people have come with that believe in the Bible. And nobody um, nobody holds to the Gilgamesh. Um, story because it's already been tested and they know it just wouldn't work. The arc wouldn't work. The story doesn't add up. It doesn't even seem halfway realistic. And then we hear about the Greek gods and people think that maybe these Greek gods like Zeus were before, you know, um, biblical times and it's just not true. Right here in Acts 14, 12 through 15, we read about when um, Paul and Barnabas were actually in Athens. As the Greeks saw Paul and Barnabas do some miraculous signs, they began to think that they were actually Zeus and um, Hermes. Right here, um, Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker, the priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city. They brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd 
wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of this, they tore their clothes, rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human, like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things and to the living God who has made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. That's the difference between all these other gods. All these other gods are man-made idols, every single one of them. None of them were the creator of all things. The creator of all things, of course, is no God before him because he created all things. It's very simple. And when we look at the evidence that we have in archaeology, it points to there always being one, only true God, and that is the Christian God, the God of the Bible. Something to think about.